the door. I'm sorry, I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. A gift? I am not drawing my gun, yet, but I don't like gifts. Just don't walk into another radio trap, okay? Relax. Not everyone is at- It's hardly surprising. The medicine cabinet is empty. Pity. Of course you were. How does that work, anyway? Amphetamine. Does it make you a better detective? There is little condescension in him. Be honest, he's not grilling you. He just wants to know. Ask if he's ever wanted to take it too. Hmm. Uh, that's what I thought. Let's go? Mm hmm. She certainly had her priorities straight when she was packing. the same two neon lit shapes, a man and a woman, only now a red thread bisects the room, pointing from the antenna outside to the cupboard on the wall. This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside, A prime, to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez, B prime. B double prime, and it suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime, the island in the bay. Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna, that is where the thread seems to point. I remember. She was there that night. She had a long time. It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. The question is, should we trust her? I find that hard to believe. But at this point, what difference does it make? So it is. For a second he seems... tired. Okay, let's go to the fucking island. How do we get there? Joyce Messier had a sloop, but she's gone. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. A red thread runs through the neon-lit shapes of a man.
Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. I give credit where credit is due, and that, sir, was a nice shot. I was watching until you hit him. Crawled inside, then. Bullets started flying. Anyway. <clears throat> he really wants you to realize that he was also on the balcony looking by. In the danger zone, so to say. I wish you a quick recovery. Also, you and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. The stay is free, the drinks are not. It just felt I needed to specify that. Oh, you know, people don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. Where was I? How do you think I know the crazy shit you pulled off out there? I was there, out on the balcony, protecting my establishment. That's actually true. You remember him, from the corner of your eye, right behind you on the whirling balcony. So, yeah, I guess I'm what you call a badass. It really took courage. Don't pick at him. Yeah, I don't know. Clients were panicking. And also, I guess I sort of found out that I don't give a shit if I die. He means it. It's not just boasting. It's something he discovered about himself. Stepping onto that balcony. I don't remember everyone who comes here. And many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. No problem. They'll come back. They always do. Hi again, gendarme. Bye-bye, gendarme. Seeing you approach. Crazy motherfucker. <whistles> Didn't think you had that fury in you. That was one hell of a shot. Hell of a shot. The fucks did not expect that. But I guess what I'm trying to say here is, thank you for intervening, fellas. His hand is covered in bruises and half This is big. It's as big of a thank you as Titus Hardy can muster under any circumstances. Dick Mullen on steroids. Glenn would have liked you had he gotten to... Never mind. There's a lump in his throat when he thinks of Glenn. Lying on the plaza mosaic. Be Dio was old. I think he'd be pretty happy with the way he went. Never could imagine him withering away on a sickbed. But Angus... He was just a stupid kid. Didn't realize the mess he'd gotten into. Trusted me. Still, the balls on that kid went down fighting for someone else's shit like a fat, angry bear. Here it comes. The last one is the worst one. He only deals with it by drinking copious amounts of 8% beer. An honest tactic. And effective. And Glenn. Glenn was my friend. Best I've ever had. I love that crazy homo like my own brother. We're all fucked without him. But what do you do? This job is shit. Dennis? That poor little rat is dead too. 
He didn't like him. That only makes it worse. Well, yeah. Memento Mori. Right. It means you might die tomorrow. Absolutely. Today. Or you might die of a heart failure. Hey, hey. Fuck you for ruining a beautiful idea. I guess I'll take a closer look at our union members. Might even ask Tibbs if he's tired of replacing windows. And maybe wants to have some fun with it. Don't know. Don't care. Even after all that hell, he's still bitter about her? Nope. He did. He shrugs and tries to look. Judging by the sight of you. Yeah. Go pay money. Hell. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome, Bina Clard. Take care, cop. Copo loco. Thanks for getting involved. And if you ever feel like the uniform is holding you back. And Titus Hardy himself would make a good officer. I will, Capo. That's a promise. Now, Scoot. Take it easy on the drink. Good point, Bino Clard. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. This was Cindy the Skull. The lieutenant crouches. Looks like it. Yes. And blood. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that flammable? The fuel oil catches fire immediately with a low hiss. A bright orange flash across the surface of the lettering. The falling snow turns to vapor above the burning message, mingling with the black smoke. The lieutenant has taken a small step back. He, the flames warmed him too. Let's go to that island. Slowly, the flames subside, the fuel burning out. The air still smells of mazout and springtime. 